Hello there, YouTube. My name is Rashid, a.k.a. Ra'alo, or as other people know me, Tactics. Uh, and today I'm going to bring you guys a updated Zer the Enchanter video. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing this is because on October 6th, I had recently won the Playmat event again at my local game store. And if you guys want to see the playmat, you can see it in the thumbnail. Shout out to my guy Trevor, who makes these thumbnails for you guys. So, you know, I will go ahead and link his Twitter in the description. And I'm definitely going to plug my boy if you guys want thumbnails made by him or just even want to kind of just give him a compliment on the work that he's doing. Please feel free to do so in the comment section or, like I said, go ahead and show his Twitter some love. Now... In this, I'm just going to tell you guys kind of my thinking moving forward with the deck. Uh, I'm just going to tell you guys what I was up against. I am going to tell you guys my default piloting method. And I'm also going to show you guys the card that I added in here that actually played a huge role in me being able to turn for, provide a... <laughs> a win con for myself and a death con for my opponents to where I could specifically cater a death condition to each one of them individually. So then that they all didn't have to die the same way. So first, the card that I added in Limdo's vault. Limdo's vault is fantastic. Now I know in the previous video, I was really like giving like a breakdown of everything and I said that I was going to add in Limdo's Vault, give it a shot, and I was going to come back to you guys and say like, okay, you know, like this, this either worked really, really well for me or this was like garbage and I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys, Limdo's Vault is a fantastic card. 10 out of 10 would recommend, I recommend you put it in every single deck that runs the colors of Demir, like 100%. This card made it so where that I was able to specifically cater my library on turn three to where that I was able to access and hit one combination of, you know, the blind obedience, uh, isochron scepter, dramatic reversal, uh, with all, with all of our, with all of our little great, 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 great mana rocks and, and stuff, stuff like that. Um, being able to just make infinite mana to then ping people to death to even going ahead and uh, tutoring to the top of my library and then having a Ledger Shredder on board to then draw the Walking Ballista to provide people with death and also um, having the Archivist on, on board, which originally helped me draw into my Demonic Consultation when I had Thoracle or uh, Thassa's Oracle in, in hand. So straight up, Limdo's Vault is a fantastic card. And even if you don't have a nutty or busted hand like that, Limdo's Vault helps enable you to literally just snag and draw your win con or organize your deck or find what you need when you are going against or dealing with problematic opponents. I was fortunate enough to have a silence in hand to stop the prosperous player from winning. And I was also fortunate enough to literally hold up three counter spells in order to deal with the Jinja Tax Progress Tyrant uh, player who literally was playing mono blue control with infinite turns and also on top of that infinite mana and also on top of that having, you know, the Thassa's Oracle Jace win condition available to him as well. And last but, last but not least, you know, just really kind of being mindful uh, that the last person in our pod was uh Ur dragon but it was like turbo aggro Ur dragon so like just pooping out dragons and you know just like making a whole bunch of mana and just swinging and just beating people in the face like you know me even like having limdo's vault to be able to tutor for a board wipe or like set up my library for a board wipe if i needed one was fantastic but like there were a bunch of bounce spells and you know like source of plow shares and, and, and things like that while me also getting zur out early and having a ristic study and also a mystical remora like there was there was enough out there for me to go holy crap this is fan you know this is fantastic i'm drawing cards people aren't people aren't paying taxes because it's so early game and then limdo's vault just goes here you go daddy i want you to be great so limdo's vault fantastic card now here's where 
I will say, uh, if I remember correctly, I made a statement in the video uh, prior to that, you know, like that, like technically Zer is, is just there to just to just make things easier. And, you know, like, and, you know, like you, you can really like win and play without having to cast Zer. Uh, I'm going to I'm going I'm actually going to retract that statement and say Zer by far is the most integral card in this deck and is a key component to your victory. 100% without Zer the Enchanter. Um, the deck, the deck is not as strong as it should be. Zer will always, and it makes sense why you see in every video, why on every site, you know, like even with the nitpicking nerds, you see when Zer is on board, you kill him on site. Zer is so strong, getting Zer out turn one and then being able to swing with him two times to literally grab two tax cards and then literally tax people out and draw so much while they're like okay well listen we can't we can't we can't just we can't just play scared magic or else you know this, this guy this guy is just, just gonna run away with the game entirely so forcing your opponents against the wall and then being able to sit in the driver's seat and just go okay i'm just gonna control the game Yes, it is beautiful, and especially when you have Isochron Scepter, Dramatic Reversal, and then, you know, you're able to, like, swing out, and hey, guess what? Now you tutor out the blind obedience? Heck yes. Zer is by far the MVP in this deck, and he livens everything up. Um, I will say MVP cards were definitely Ledger Shredder and also Archivist of Agma. There was a bunch of, there was a bunch of tutoring. There was, you know, there were people who were casting more than two spells a turn and, you know, me just being able to cycle it and really just kind of cycling cards to where I'm like, oh, you know, like if it's like a, if, it, if it's a, if it's a talisman, whatever, I don't really care. You know, if it's a, if, it, if it's like, if it's like a, you know, Graph Digger's Cage, what, 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 whatever, 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 like anything that I'm just like, hey, it doesn't matter what's happening right now. I am searching for something because I have a win con in hand and I need to be able to dig through my deck. Uh, same thing with Archivist when, you know, you have like people like doing like Mystical Tutors, you have literally the five color toolbox to that's that's literally over there, like just tutoring for whatever cards they want and then just pooping out dragons like Archivist and also Ledger Shredder really liven things up. And because there was a lot of interaction, you know, Path to Exile, Source to Plowshares, uh, you know, min, you know, min, mental missteps, force, of, you know, force of negations. Like there was just like like there was just a bunch going on that those two cards definitely did what they needed to do and definitely helped me win. And so I would say that they do a fantastic job. I was fortunate enough to not to not um to not meet the ginger taxes uh Narset uh part of Veils, but I a hundred percent knew that by me having Ledger Shredder on board and also with the fact that it's a flyer if Narset comes out and the fact that I'm just going to continue to just like pitch things that, you know, aren't necessarily like too important for me right now, unless if they're, unless if they're like immediate tutors, um, I'm pitching them and legislator is going to get bigger and I'm going to one shot that Narset hundred percent. Um, but moving forward in knowing that, Zer is an integral piece. I want to get Zer out definitely before turn three. So it's get Zer out, search for tax pieces. After you search for tax pieces, you want to put yourself in the driver's seat and then just turn on autopilot. So that means after a while, you go tax, tax, and then you go blind obedience. After blind obedience, you go rest in peace. After rest in peace, you go necropotence. Now, those last three can be switched or be varied depending on depending on the opponent that you are playing against. But even then, I did not find myself desperately searching or grabbing necropotence early game like how I used to because I would just I was so concerned about like just like burning out you know my hand and you know like just not having enough gas to do things to where I was like yo let me go ahead let me slow everyone else down and then have things in hand to protect Zer and after that 
I'm good to go. Um, really, once you set yourself up with early games or swing, grab, tax pieces, autopilot, the only other thing for you to do is to really be cautious and not try to pull the trigger too early. Because remember, in high-level magic, there is a lot of... there. There, there's going to be a lot of interaction and especially early game and especially when you're potentially like going to run into somebody that is like more than likely going to uh, have something to stop you. You know, there were there, there were two other people playing blue at the table. So that literally meant I had to keep track of how much mana they had open, you know, the amount of cards in hand, and especially what I was, you know, like the order in which I was going to do things. If it's your turn, you untap and Zer is on the battlefield, you always proceed to combat first with Zer to act like you have things in hand to, you know, counter, bounce, maneuver, deal with in a way that. It makes your opponents maybe hesitant to do something or even test your bluff. And then main phase two, that's when you can kind of play your, you know, you, you can kind of play your thing out or your uh, other cards out. But you still want to hold up some mana in order to always kind of present that illusion that you always will have something because this is a high level magic game. Now, I say that because. Oftentimes, I have found myself to where, you know, I've, I've really, I've really shot the gun early and I noticed that that's normally when I lose. Like, you know, I'll be in the driver's seat, I'll go ahead and instead of putting, you know, the deck on autopilot, I go, you know what, let me just, let me, let me just, let me just try to just rev this all the way and just press down on the gas. So... Once Zer comes out, once you once you set up your tax pieces and put the deck on autopilot, you're really allowed to just hold up mana and you want to be as versatile as possible. You want to be able to adapt to these situations that are currently happening on the board. And that's where this deck shines the most. It shines underneath stacks because that's fine. We will play things on our opponent's turn. That's perfectly fine. This deck also shines against turbo-aggressive decks. I have no problem searching out Web of Inertia and then casting Rest in Peace. Heck, I have no problem searching out Solitary Confinement and then searching out Necropotence and then just continuing to feed my hand. Because... I've set myself up to where I at least have early game tax pieces. I want you to spend more mana for me to not gain card advantage. And so with that being said, I think that for the most part, um, I would say this deck and Doomsday Zer are very, very complicated decks if you're not interested in in of if you're if if you're if you're not 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 interested but if you're not cognizant of what's happening or what's going on at the table and if you're not keeping track of everything there are plenty of other turbo decks that are out there i actually have a couple of them posted on my channel a, a perfect example would be hullen who, you know, is a very adaptive deck, but is a storm deck. So if that is more up to your liking or to your or, or to or to what caters to you, then that's perfectly fine. And I would say for people who enjoy kind of a more methodical, you know, like keeping keep, keeping keeping pace, control, and just like an all around very engaging deck. I think that Zer is the way to go. But with that being said, 
if you all have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, maybe, you know, like maybe, maybe, maybe you're like, maybe you're like, Hey man, you know, like maybe you guys like the physical deck profiles and seeing the cards more than you do these mocks field, uh, breakdowns, please let me know. And I would be more than happy to record a couple of videos like that just so then that I can cater to you guys. Uh, but otherwise than that, I just appreciate your time, your patience, and even checking out the video. You all have a fantastic day, and we will catch you on the flip side.